Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, why did Neil Armstrong get to be the first person to walk on the moon? And just before we get started with today's video, I do want to say that it is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 17,000 courses. The first 200 viewers to click the link in the description below will get a two-month trial for free. Okay, so on July the 20th, 1969, with one small step, Neil Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. Since that date, the moon landing has been the subject of intense study and historical analysis. From what Armstrong actually said with his first step to if the American flags the astronauts planted are still there, mankind's first rendezvous with the moon has captured the world's attention in a way that few other things have. Despite this, there are still several noteworthy facts that have remained obscure after all these years. Allow us to bring just a few to light. To begin with, why Armstrong got to be the first person on the moon? Out of a group of 29 astronauts that trained for the Apollo mission, only three were chosen when the final announcement was made in January of 1969. Neil Armstrong, Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and the oft-forgotten Michael Collins became the official crew of Apollo 11. Immediately, attention turned to which crew member, Armstrong or Aldrin, would be the first to walk on the moon. Collins was the command module pilot and therefore was ineligible. Even though both men were going to walk on the moon, it was a great honor to be the first. In fact, the question was asked at the press conference, and the response was that it had yet to be decided. Over the next four months, as the astronauts continued their training, debate and rumors circulated among the media. At first, it seemed that Aldrin would have the honor. This speculation came from the precedent set by the Gemini program, which made ten crewed flights for the purpose of testing ships and astronauts in spacewalks. During the flight, the commander, which Armstrong was to be for the Apollo 11 mission, stayed inside the ship, while the pilot, which Aldrin was to be in Apollo 11, did the spacewalking. Further fueling this thinking was that it was rumored that Aldrin was actively campaigning to be the guy. According to the memoir written by Chris Craft, head of mission control, Buzz Aldrin desperately wanted that honor and wasn't quiet in letting it be known. In April, only three months before liftoff, it was announced that Neil Armstrong would be the first man to walk on the moon. The main reason NASA gave for the decision was that the Eagle's hatch opens to one side, rather than up or down, and that side was towards the pilot, Aldrin. The bottom line was that when the hatch was opened, the commander, Armstrong, had a clear path to exit, while the pilot was pinned in the rather cramped space of the module. By sheer happenstance, it made much more sense for Armstrong to exit first. Plus, as NASA's heads point out, Armstrong was actually the more senior member of the team anyway, having entered the program in 1962, while Aldrin came in in 1963. In later years, despite the official Hatch story, some, including Kraft and fellow astronaut Al Bean, have come out and saying that NASA wanted Armstrong to have the honor rather than Aldrin because they thought Neil's ego could handle it better than Aldrin's. So perhaps the Hatch design simply gave them the excuse they needed. Next up, were Armstrong's first words when stepping onto the moon planned? Right up until his last breath in 2012, Armstrong adamantly insisted that his first line was spontaneous and was only settled on in the moments prior to the walk. A BBC documentary released after the astronaut's death disputes that, however. In the film, Dean Armstrong, Neil's brother, tells a different story. In the months leading up to the mission, Dean, Neil, and their family spent time together at Cape Cod. According to Dean, one night after both men put their boys to bed, Neil challenged his younger brother to a hearty game of risk. During that game, Neil handed Dean a piece of paper. Dean stated, On that piece of paper, there was, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. He says, What do you think about that? I said, Fabulous. He said, I thought you might like that. That said, both Aldrin and Collins made it clear that at no point did Armstrong share his thoughts about what he would say with them. Of course, perhaps his brother was the exception. This all brings us to the second thing said by a human being standing on the surface of the moon. While everyone remembers that first line, few can recall the second. And that's because, well, it didn't hold the same oomph factor. According to the official Apollo 11 air-to-ground voice transcription, that line was, and the, the surface is fine and powdery. Armstrong continued on this line of thinking, I can, I can pick it up loosely with my toe. It does adhere in fine layers like powdered charcoal to the sole and sides of my boots. I only go in a small fraction of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch, but I can see the footprints of my boots and the treads in the fine sandy particles. 
Now we do have one more fact for you, but just before we continue, I do want to tell you about Skillshare. Now at the top of the video, I did mention that this video was brought to you by Skillshare, and Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 17,000 courses. Now the internet is not exactly short on places to learn. You are on YouTube, one of those places. Thank you for watching, by the way. And there are also plenty of paid platforms out there. But why I love Skillshare is because you can dive into any course you want at any time, and it's just $10 a month. And these courses, they're not just superficial, they're super in-depth. They have many parts so you're gonna learn way more than you can with just a short YouTube tutorial video and also you're dealing with a quality issue I mean anyone can upload to YouTube and it's not all today I found our quality out there am I right Seriously though, with Skillshare you don't have to buy individual courses just to watch one part of it. There's no limits on what you can watch and learn, and it's all sorts of in-depth education on a wide variety of subjects. For me, Skillshare has been invaluable for learning about video making and editing, but there are tons of courses out there, everything from design to cooking. So whatever you're into, you will find something on Skillshare. Now, I personally believe that learning new skills is one of the best ways to get ahead in life, and Skillshare makes it easy and affordable. For the first 200 people who go over using our promo link in the description below, they will get two months of Skillshare totally for free, totally risk-free. What have you got to lose? You'll love it. Go check it out. And let's get back to the video. So another often forgotten Apollo 11 fact is President Nixon's alternate speech. After the Apollo 1's tragic fire in 1967 and the unproven nature of space travel at the time, the safe return of Apollo 11's crew was far from an assured thing. To that point, President Nixon had to prepare for every scenario when he addressed the nation, including the tragedy of a moon disaster. So in order to prepare, he had his speechwriter, William Sapphire, prepare remarks that are both chilling and inspiring. The speech begins with these two lines. Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know there is no hope for their recovery, but they also know that there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. Additionally, below this speech were instructions on what needed to be done both before and after the address to the nation. Before, the president should telephone each of the widows-to-be. Afterwards, NASA will end communications with the men, and a clergyman should adopt the same procedure as burial at sea, commending their souls to the deepest of the deep, concluding with the Lord's Prayer. So we're going to end the video on that rather morbid note, but I really hope you did enjoy it. As I mentioned, it's brought to you by Skillshare. Check them out in the link in the description below. And as always, Thank you for watching.